it's kind of strange because it's like, hey, do you guys want to meet in the middle of nowhere in the woods? And I know we haven't met before, but you know, we could just head out and camp together. It's essentially like a giant text message to friends you already have, people you've never met, but who you know you want to meet. 17 vehicles later, we're in the middle of nowhere without service. The difficulty comes in, I think, when people just ask too many questions and want too many details, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know how it's gonna go. So what are we gonna do? What's the plan look like? You know, it's like, are we gonna hike? Are we gonna, instant? well, we're just gonna get to camp and be in the woods. It's people who just value quality time spent, who are humans being, if that makes sense. We're just gonna go out there. There's something about going somewhere you've never been in a vehicle that you know is guaranteed to break down at some point. Like you're, you're almost just constantly waiting for it to hit. And when it hits, you sort of just get a little adrenaline drop. All right, I know what to do. They take an unholy amount of work. If you're not willing to commit to working with your hands on your van and you own a van again, then you're not gonna succeed. It looks like there's a bad connection on the fuse box, which was for his lights flickering. And then I don't know why his radiator fan's not kicking on. We've missed out on a few trips, you know, cause we've hopped in the van and started going down and the van just, I'm not gonna make it. You better turn around now, because it's going to get worse. You get very unafraid of doing whatever it takes to keep going. Kind of, you have to laugh to keep from crying, but it's, you're all laughing together, so it's, it's fine. There it is. We'll leave Friday night and head home Monday night. The vans are just a small part of, I think, why people really like it. It's what's behind the vans that matters. We don't have television or anything like that, really, and we're out a lot. I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I just don't enjoy staying at home, and I'll take the kids. Last year, we spent six months in the van, and this year will be maybe three months total. We are dealing with reality also. We owe the government a lot of money <laughs> for student loans. Having Christina go through her doctoral program and raising two babies, like, you know, it's, we go where we can get back from and we have chunks of time we spend wherever we feel like going. We had this, you know, laid out plan that I guess you sort of think of for your life. And, you know, it has not been how we imagined at all. And, you know, never saw even this type of van life, you know, in it. But that's what it has to be. We were pretty anti-social media for a while, and we had just sort of gotten on Instagram, and when I got the Instagram, I thought hashtag was like a new breakfast cereal. That was the way it sort of came about. There's a hashtag vanagon life, which is, you know, just off of van life. And so I'd been following just the travels of this one vanagon in particular, our friend Megan and Jamie. After like seeing all their travels and adventures, I'm like, oh, we gotta find another van again, you know? I went on Craigslist right after looking through sort of their feeds about five or seven minutes earlier. The van I was just following on Instagram had been posted on Craigslist for sale. I'll sell one to a friend who needs a van and then we'll get another one. So I'll fix that one up and sell it. It's an easy way to make friends. The Instagram is like getting a lot of people more and more excited about it. There's like no reason not to meet up, you know? It's interesting to me the way just clicking on a hashtag can lead you down a path of just following someone's trip or adventure or life, and then it coming full circle where you're actually truly friends with them. You meet the people who started the hashtag. Dave in Oregon started the Vanagon Life hashtag, and one day I'll meet Foster, the Van Life hashtag. I gram, therefore I am, is like the new fucking existence. And it's kind of revolting, you know? It's always been kind of weird for me to go 
and see people and things like that and be like, oh, you're that guy from the internet. I always just kind of cringe and I'm like, yep, I, I, I'm that dude from the internet. My name is Foster Huntington. I guess I'm a photographer and I make books and videos. Living in Manhattan with a corporate job, felt like I was just kind of pissing away my 20s doing that. Quit my job, gathered all my shit, came back here, hopped in my van, and then just hit the road. Lived out of my van for three years and then started documenting vans and I was just so excited about it. The formation of the hashtag came about because like, I just remember, you know, like the, seeing photos of Tupac and stuff where he had like the thug life tattooed on his stomach. I was just kind of joking, with, started joking with my friends being like, yeah, it's fucking van life. It's not thug life, it's van life, you know. Van life is like sleeping in a Walmart parking lot and looking for a place to go to the bathroom and like, you know, having your van break down when you're traveling, that's van life. I just thought it was hilarious. Seeing a van, I'd be like, hashtag, you know, it's van life. It was just like something I did at first and then people like were like, oh, that's cool. And then I was like, well, I guess I should start a blog. been weird because when I started living in a van, Instagram wasn't a thing. One of the issues I see with van life is people getting fixated with the fetish of the item, you know, the van, like, and they, there's like a whole culture that arises around like the consumption of that one item. And to me, van life is about the whole experience of it. I wanted to have a, a home base, so that kind of, happened in the winter of 2014. I decided I wanted to build a treehouse and this place kind of snowballed into existence. Ultimately, I want and I hope that people get out and do stuff for the sake of doing it. I think it's really cool that people are like, you like traveling vans? I like traveling vans, like let's do this. Every single van is unique. It's like a little, it's a little living room in there. It's a little apartment, but it's the size of one parking spot. If you're high strung or OCD in any way, that will, that will be the undoing of your van life, I would say. Once you do it enough, you can just keep doing it. I've been doing it for a year full time, and my next step is possibly into a sailboat. Work at your own pace, disappear when you want. That's the way to do it. There's a lot of America to see if that's for sure, and I think there's a lot more people that are willing to do it now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Through Instagram was how I found out about this particular trip, and then it just kind of took on a life of its own. I'm hanging out with 12 vans of which I've never met before. It's been a wonderful experience to be the old farts here, but we, they, they, they want us to be here, it seems. You can't replace an experience like that unless you forget about it and lose all your photos. I think a lot of people sort of view it through rose-tinted lenses. I mean, people will reach out to us and say, hey, I really want to get a van again. And I'll respond with, you know, what, why? Is it because you see these pictures? Like, do you understand, like, the consequences that come with picking that? Sometimes you have to pull over and, like, sleep on the street and that's not fun with kids. Keeping the van clean is horrible. It's almost like a constant struggle. You almost just accept being dirty. <laughs> the three or four day mark hits and you can smell your kids from the back seat. I think it makes you a better person. Like my patience between being, raising my children and a large portion of that time being in the van, you're unable to believe that like something is going wrong at this moment when your son's crying in the back and all you wanted to do was just make it another 10 miles and all of a sudden your van's running horrible because your O2 sensor just went bad and then it might start to rain. At the time it happens, you are just like livid, but then to be able to look back on it and be like, I really grew through that, like it's, it's totally priceless. It's made my relationship with my wife way stronger because it's like, all right, you deal with the kids, I'll work on the van. We might be just sleeping right here tonight. I can't snap a photo of everything, but to just like 
capture those images in your mind that are just for you. Like it's 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 kind of indescribable. Your kids just don't give a rip about how much money you make. And it's really interesting to go from working 70 hours plus a week to like accepting the role that is sometimes not viewed as like the masculine role in the household of being home with the kids to like walking in that role and accepting it and like loving it um, and just realizing that you're not making a penny profit wise, but you're, you know, you have the most important job in the world. <laughs> People just wish they could disappear. And I think maybe Instagram and all these hashtags provide that for a lot of people. That's how we've sort of found a lot of the friends that we now have. And they become really, truly good friends. Some of us climb, some of us fish, some of us just want to be in the woods. You know, and I think that's so much more attainable than the entire world understands. We wanted to make this time in our lives epic. If you're not going to have a blast, I don't see the point. If more people could start spending time and spending less money on things that don't really mean anything, then I think the next generation's gonna look a lot better. It's the home we wish we could call home for eternity. And now that we've been through everything going wrong, it's just waiting for it to go wrong again, I guess. They say if you do something 10,000 times, you, you master it. I think we're getting pretty close. <laughs> Kids, especially, I guess, in this country, all they want is all the time you have. And if you can give that to them, I think it's, you know, the greatest thing in the world. You don't need six figures, you just need time. <laughs>